Hi everyone, this is a um, lecture on chapter 29, which deals with uh, fungi. In this lecture, we'll be discussing all about the, uh, the properties of fungi and their influences, their life cycle, um, how they are impactful in an ecosystem. So in this chapter, we're gonna talk about how fungi master traders and recyclers, recyclers in terrestrial ecosystems. So, Fungi are going to really play an important role in being decomposers, which we're going to see. Um, so how do we study? Why do we study fungi? What's the point? What are some of the major themes in their diversification? So what are the lineages in terms of evolution? And we're going to focus on this by looking at fungi as mutualists, so how they act actually to help other organisms like plants we're going to see, fungi as decomposers, how they help the entire ecosystem, and the various types of variation that exist in their reproductive structures and life cycles. So fungi are eukaryotic organisms, again, meaning that they have a nucleus. They grow as single cells, um, in the case of yeast, or as large branching networks of multicellular filaments. And we're gonna see this later on, that there's very different types of fungi. When you think of fungi, you a lot of times probably think of, you know, a mushroom, uh, but that's just one type of fungi. Um, and they do present themselves in various ways in an ecosystem. Fungi absorb and release, transfer nutrients from dead organisms, the world's most important decomposers, right? And in that way, they profoundly influence biodiversity. Okay, so these guys play a key role in nutrient cycling in an ecosystem, terrestrial ecosystems specifically. They live in association with other organisms, benefit their hosts, and thus are part of beneficial symbiotic relationships or mutualistic relationships, right? So we see that occurring, and we'll talk about that uh, in a bit with plants specifically. So like I said, fungi have very important economic and ecological impacts. Um, when it comes to fungi, there's you know a handful of species, about 300 or so, I would say, that cause debilitating diseases in humans and also in crop plants. And in both of those cases, it's going to affect the human population. Right. So something that's going to cause a disease in humans is obviously going to affect mortality and things like that. And then something that causes disease to the crops that we eat is going to cause problems in terms of what it is that we eat. Right. And that's going to, um, you know, decrease mortality. So some of the examples of, um, you know, diseases caused by fungi that you may have heard of, athlete's foot, uh, diaper rash, vaginitis, uh, even pneumonia, thrush. These things all are causing diseases in humans, uh, and they're caused by fungi. Fungi actually work mutualistically, like I said, with plants to nourish us. We'll talk about that in a bit. They affect climate change because they're critical to the carbon cycle on land. So part of that job of being a decomposer is to take things like carbon, put them back into the soil so that they can be uh, reused. All right. Um, Fungi are also more closely related to animals than they are than we are to plants, which is kind of interesting to think about. So in terms of their evolution, we are more closely cousins to fungi than to plants, which you normally um, you know, wouldn't think of that. I talked about human in, in illness as being a uh, economic and uh, not so much economic, but a human impact. Um, and you know, many of those human illnesses that we we've, we've seen. Um, you know, like I said, athlete's foot being a not a real major one, but um, there are things like pneumonia that can be very uh, major fungal illnesses. Um, trying to think of any other ones that are jumping off to, to my yeast infection, right, is obviously an example of a, a disease caused by uh, fungus. Major destructive impact of fungi on people is through the food supply. So fungi uh, really destroy, you know, billions of dollars of crops each year. So things like rust, smuts, mildews, wilts, blights. Um, fungi destroy significant numbers of trees as well in North America. So the chestnut blight, the Dutch elm disease, these are all things that are caused by fungus. Um, so it's really important to study these and control the spread of these fungi so that they don't have this major effect on humans' economics uh, and our way of life. Um, as we've seen with these blights. So here's some uh, examples of parasitic fungi infecting corn and other crops. 
saccharidic fungi rots fruits and vegetables. I'm sure you've seen this. If you've left your strawberries out, you should um, refrigerate your strawberries very quickly after getting them. If you leave them out, they're really susceptible to this fungi. So in addition to all of those negative things, uh, we can focus on the beneficial impacts on humans as well. So there's positive economic and ecological impacts on humans from fungi. So many antibiotics, uh, the enzymes that we've gotten from these um, fungi, uh, specifically the soil-dwelling fungi, give us you know, penicillin. Mushrooms are very tasty if you eat the right ones. Right? We look at single-celled fungi as yeast. Uh, it's waste products of yeast make bread and cheese, anything that's got that kind of sourdough bread taste is the result of the fermentation process. Um, soy sauce, tofu, wine and beer they are all the result of fermentation of yeast. In terms of chocolate, um, the um, uh, chocolate is made from the seeds of plants that are fermented by fungi, so making it edible. Fungal enzymes are also used to improve the characteristics of food, such as fruit juice, candy, and meat. So lots of good impacts of fungi. All right, so fungi are, again, like I said, more closely related to us than they are to plants. So one of the things that makes them so different from plants is that even though they might, you know, see a mushroom and you see it down with the plants, you think of it as being like a plant, it does has more animal characteristics than it does plant characteristics. It doesn't do photosynthesis. Okay, it digests its food. So remember photosynthesis is taking in the light energy, converting it to glucose, right? But fungi do digest food similarly to um, animals, but the difference is that they're performing extracellular um, digestion. So this extracellular digestion takes place um, outside of the organism. And one of the things about the digestive system is, for us even, for animals, digestion is also extracellular. Um, you don't think about it because you're putting food into your body, but in reality the digestive tract is just a long tube with an opening on one end and an opening on the other end. So literally something can go through your digestive tract without ever coming into contact with the inside of your body. So fungi, just like most animals, do uh, digest their food extracellularly. So they perform the digestion and then the um, when food is digested, the molecules are then taken in. Uh, to be absorbed. The difference is it doesn't happen in a tract. It happens kind of outside in the um, environment for these fungi. And we'll talk about how that happens. Okay. So if you look very simply here, um, here is the mushroom, right? And extending off of the mushroom, the fungi, there's this um, uh, mycorrhizae, or, uh, which is made up of hyphae, which we'll see, and it's going to invade this plant cell and it's going to digest the nutrients from within the plant cell. Okay, so the digestion is happening out here. So enzymes are released and uh, various cells and things like that are uh, broken down that way. So this is kind of interesting, but again, essentially the same way in which we uh, digest. So when we talk about kind of this mutualistic relationship that takes place, uh, mycorrhizal fungi are fungi that are going to live in close association with plant roots. Okay, Basically what happens here is the fungi provide the plant with uh, water and key nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus and in exchange uh, for the sugars. Okay, so it's a mutualistic relationship. The fungi provides the plants with water and the plant provides the fungi with sugar. Okay, um, without this fungi, plant growth is really substantially slowed. Um, so these fungi are really important to agricultural productivity. So the question, does plant growth suffer if mycorrhizal fungi are abs absent? Absolutely. Okay, absolutely. Without this, the uh, plants are not as efficient in absorbing nutrients. Okay, so here's look at look at this difference here um, in the roots, right? So down here we've just got our roots coming down, and remember the roots are going to be involved in absorption from the soil, absorption of nutrients. But 
look at how much more surface area is provided by that mycorrhizal network. Okay, and you can see the difference here in these two plants that are provided with that mycorrhizal fungi, and then in this case without it, substantially more growth.